Hello everyone. More and more people are talking about Web3 and more and more people are using MetaMask. Essentially, MetaMask is a crypto wallet that enables users to access the Web3 and use the decentralized application. Now today we are going to see how to integrate MetaMask with a Laravel application so users can log in with their wallet. So this you can see here, this is the MetaMask account I, I have here. I essentially, nothing in my wallet, but I can still use the account. Now let's start. Before this video, I have already completed the coding. So I'm going to walk you through the steps on how to develop the feature to support MetaMask login in the Laravel application. Before I start, I'd like to show you that I have already pushed a code to my repository sugar forever slash laurel dash metamask. Feel free to check it out. Let's find out. Okay, you can see this is pretty much the standard and classic laravel template. Nothing fancy here. It's a standard installation with breeze installed. So Remember to, to check out your installation if the necessary authentication is installed. So this is a login link I'm not going to click. Instead, I'm going to create a new endpoint called metamask-login where the user can click a button to complete the login with their metamask extension. Okay. Now let's look into the code base. What I have completed, first step is to add a new migration in which I'm going to add a new column called s underscore address, which is for the user's Ethereum account address. So the address will be stored in this column. In database, you should be able to see the column here after you run pp artisan migrate. I'm going to clean up all this data here. So it will be an empty table. I will show you how to sign in. After a successful migration, we need to install Web3 dependency by npm install web3 so this is a dependency what we are going to add in the package.json so this is a front end or client side dependency web3 the next step is go to app.js in resources slash js here we are going to import web3 component the rest of the js code will be covered shortly now let's go to the server side or backend in web3.php, I added two new endpoints, a get request slash s slash signature and the post request slash s slash authenticate. They are implemented in web3 auth controller class with signature and authenticate functions. These are two steps or the features that the server side or backend need to support. Let's look into signature. Here, when the, when the user is going to log in on the web application, the client side will send a request to fetch the message for signing. So this message should be unique to the, to the user. So we need to generate some nouns or random string. So we are using the random function to generate a code and put in the session with key login nouns and generate a signature message. The message is something like this. You are going to sign in with us with a noun. So this is unique signature message. Okay, this message is returned to the client side. The client side will sign the message and send back the signature and their Ethereum account address. Those information 
is sent to the server side by the post to endpoint authenticate, which is defined here. In the authenticate function, we will fetch the login nouns from the session and uh, generate the signature message again. So this is a message the client just signed. We are going to verify with the message and the signature and the Ethereum account address. How it's verified? Let's look into the verify signature function. This is pretty much the standard algorithm we are following. So feel free to check out the mainstream documentation online talking about how to verify the, the Ethereum signed message. Okay, once it's verified, as you can see here, with any error, it will throw some exception. So once it's returned, we assume that this is a successful authentication. Now it's time for us to create the user for a new account or use the existing user to log in. So we are looking for the first user with this Ethereum account address. If it's found, we get the first user and the login with it. Otherwise, we create a new user with the Ethereum account address. The address will be used for name, email. Both of these two columns are generated by the server side. And we generate a random password. At last, we fill the account address in S underscore address column, which we created earlier. Okay, then we can log in the user and remove the login nouns from the session and complete the verification or and the authentication. So in a successful authentication, a positive or 200 HTTP response will be returned to the client side. Okay, so these are the server side implementations now let's come back to the client side. Oh, before we finish the backend, I need to mention here, you can see here we use two classes, Kcock and the EC. They are from two dependency we installed in the composer.json. These guy, Kcock and the elliptic PHP, these two packages need to be installed by composer require. So once it's installed we are good okay this is the back end of server side now let's come back to app.js we need to register the the login button uh, click handler what the handler does is as follows firstly we need to check if the ethereum object exists once we install the metamask extension we should be able to have this object and then we need to create a object web3 so you can see here i'm fetching three attributes this is i'm going to show you here so this is the login page template it's a single button page with text login with metamask and three attributes signature url authenticate url and the redirect url these URLs are used by the client side to, to fetch the signature message, to post the authenticate request, and based on a successful authentication, redirect the web page to the correct or expected destination. In my case, it's a dashboard. So in the app.js, we got these three URLs. Now it's time to fetch the signature message by a GET request and get the Ethereum account address from this function, request account. Now we have the message address. We use the Web3 object to sign the message with the address. So we have a signature. Okay, it's time to post to the authenticate endpoint with the address and signature. With a successful authentication, we can redirect the web page to the destination 
in my case it's a dashboard okay that's pretty much it now let's come back here it's called the metamask login right you can see here login with metamask now you can see the message you are going to sign in with us this is announced the random stream we sign the message send it back to the server side in the post request with a successful authentication you can see the page has been redirected to the server side uh, sorry the dashboard as we are using the account address as username so this is why you see here this is the address it should be okay in some decentralized application once you're signing or logging with your metamask the, or the crypto wallet you also see the, the name with the account address if we refresh a page it's still the same that's simply because we are using the Laravel authentication feature so we are still reusing the user's table and the authentication stuff so we still see it's logged in if I log out and we metamask login again before I proceed let's see in the database we should see one single entry here yes that's that's a user with my Ethereum account address and with 1855 now let's log in again so you can see here we have some message with a different nouns we signed and now we logged in the same user we won't see a second entry here instead we still have the same entry with my Ethereum account address okay I think that's it for today we have pretty much everything covered on how to integrate metamask with your lava application this is a very basic uh, step to get into the web3 in the future probably we can we can extend the application to support more features so that it can be more more web3 featured okay uh that's it for today thanks for watching if you feel it's useful remember to thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel thanks again see you next time bye bye